Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to use a protractor to measure angles. Let's jump into our example where we are going to measure this angle right here. Now, when using a protractor, we have three simple steps. First, we need to line up the center point of the protractor with the vertex of the angle. And this is the center point right here, and we need to line it up with the vertex of the angle right here. Now keep in mind, not all protractors look the exact same, but there will be some type of indication of where that center point is. There will be some type of mark or maybe even a small hole. I also wanna mention that you may also hear the center point called just the center of the protractor or even the origin of the protractor. So all of those mean the same thing. Just know that it needs lined up over the vertex. Now, once we have the center point lined up with the vertex, we move on to step two, where we need to line up the baseline of the protractor with an arm of the angle. You may also hear the arms of angles called rays or even sides. Now, the baseline of the protractor is this line that goes across here. It goes through the center point and all the way across. Now we want to think of the baseline as zero degrees. It's our starting point, and we are seeing how far the angle opens up from that point, so to speak. Now the arm of the angle is either going to go to the left or right from the center point once we have the protractor lined up. For this example, the arm that we're going to line the protractor up with is going to go left from the center point. So it's going to line up right along here. So to sum it up so far, we have the center point on the vertex and baseline on an arm, and we are lined up. Now we're ready to make the correct read. So let's look at the protractor lined up. So here's the protractor lined up on top of the angle. The center point of the protractor is lined up with the vertex of the angle, and the baseline of the protractor is lined up with an arm of the angle. Now we're ready for step three make the correct read. Now looking at this arm right here, it goes through 60 degrees and 120 degrees. So which is it, 60 degrees or 120 degrees? Well, there are two ways to determine this. The first way, we can see that this is an obtuse angle. It's greater than 90 degrees. So this has to be 120 degrees. 60 degrees is not possible. It doesn't make sense for an obtuse angle. So we can use what we know about obtuse angles and acute angles to determine this. Or our second way, if we take a look at our baseline, we see zero degrees right here. Remember, for our baseline, this is zero degrees. And since this zero degrees is on the outside track of numbers, those are the numbers we want to look at for this angle. 120 degrees is the outside number here and the measurement that we are going to use. So this angle is 120 degrees. Now I do wanna mention if we have an arm of the angle going right along the baseline, then we go off of this zero degrees and we will use the inside numbers. Now before we end, I do wanna talk about the tick marks going around the outside of the protractor. Now you may have noticed that the numbers shown count by 10. So for example, we have zero degrees, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, so on and so forth. Now in between each of those numbers shown, so for example, right here, right here, right here, right here, and right here, and those go all the way around, those represent five. So specifically, if we take a look at this tick right here in between 50 and 60 or 120 and 130, that would be 55 degrees or 125 degrees. And then the smallest tick marks, which we have the most of going around the outside of the protractor, those count by one degree. So keep that in mind when measuring angles with a protractor. So there you have it. There's how to use a protractor to measure angles. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.